Greetings, beautiful earthlings. My name is Star. If you are new here, I don't know how you found me, but I am super glad you did. And if you are returning, y'all the real MVP, you already know. So if you guys missed my first two episodes in the series, I would highly recommend starting with those because there's a whole lot of introduction to the series that I would like for you to understand before we jump into learning the deck. Uh, there was a lot of really good information in the beginning part of the book that I did go over very briefly for you guys. So if you do not have this book, you do not have access to this book, I would highly suggest watching those first two episodes. We just briefly introduce the book and go over the specific meanings of the colors in the Rider Waite Tarot. So I will link those two below for you guys. Um, I will also link where you can find this book here on Amazon, non-affiliated as always, as well as the Centennial Smithweight in a tin that I am using here. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump in. I really hope you guys go watch those other videos so we can get all of the introductions and all the blabbering out of the way. I am gonna try my very best to keep all of these videos under 30 minutes, hopefully under 20 minutes if I can. That way I don't lose you guys with all of the information that we have going on. So let's go ahead and get our drink of water, friends. Okay, so um, if you guys haven't seen this yet, this is a series that I am very excited about. I have been cooking this up for quite a while and I'm so excited to finally get started because I have really wanted to be teaching tarot on my channel and somehow I just got kind of mixed up in being a deck review channel. So that was not in my intention, but I did have to learn a lot of tarot in order to be able to teach tarot. So as you guys might notice, there is no background music in this uh, series and that's because I wanna keep this very serious. This is going to be like a classroom um, type of setting. So I might call you guys students from time to time by accident. I don't intend to. It's just kind of how I refer to this in my brain. I am teaching you guys in this series. So I don't want to get copyright claimed in case meditative mind ever decides that um, they don't want me using their videos. So that's why this series specifically does not have music and I won't be using music for all 80 of these videos. So I have said this before, if you guys uh, are really bored just sitting here watching them, that's totally okay. You don't have to look at my face. You don't have to look at these cards. You guys can just put it on the background, passively listen if you learn easier that way and just absorb the information. That's totally fine with me because I understand um, Zoom learning is not for everyone. So let's go ahead today, you guys. We are jumping into the very first card, The Fool. So actually, in this book, for some reason, they put The Fool at the end. I don't know if you can see that. It's really weird. I've never seen that in anything. Um, they do talk about how the fool can be the beginning or the end of the journey, and that's not right. That confuses the crap out of me, um, because that's not the 22nd card. But for the purposes of, um, what's the word, continuity, we're going to use the fool as the beginning of the journey, okay? Because every deck uses the fool as the beginning of the journey, that's why there's a zero on it. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys, I don't need to hold the whole deck. I'm gonna show you guys the Fool. So let's take a good look at the Fool. And if you guys remember from my other ones, I don't know if I just said it, uh, this is the Centennial Smithweight. So these colors are a tiny bit muted compared to the normal Rider Waite, but this is uh, the way that Pixie intended these images to be. So I do love the Centennial. So as you see on the Fool, we do have the zero number here because it is the beginning of the journey. So if you guys have not ever seen the Fool card, if you guys do not have a tarot deck and you are learning here, you can pause the video, take a good look at this guy. We're gonna continuously reference him today. So let's get a good look. You guys see there's lots of imagery in there and that's what the purpose of this series is. We are going to learn all of the little things that are put in that card for the purpose of the meaning of the card. So I know that it's very hard for beginners to grasp the Rider Waite Tarot because there is so much imagery that it's very overwhelming. 
And I myself am still learning the Rider Waite Tarot all the time, so I carry this book around with me everywhere I go so that every free bit of time I have I can just reference this, learn a little bit more about the cards. I've already read through it once, this is my second time going through it now, so I do highly recommend this even if you guys get to the very end of the series and finally decide to buy this book. I don't make money off of the book, but it will help you guys out a whole lot for to have this book on hand if you're very serious about learning the right away. So let's go ahead and I think what I want to do is go over the meanings first before I start talking about the symbolism. So as you guys see here, this is what the book looks like. We've got this big chunk right here. You got all the numbers over here pointing to the hidden imagery. Then you've got these different meanings here. So if you guys want to hear all of this fun stuff that's hidden in there, you're gonna just have to stick around or you can fast forward through it. But I would like to get the meaning of the card out of the way first so that you can see how the symbolism works with the meaning, okay? So let's go ahead and get another quick drink because I'm already losing my voice. Okay, so the top part here says, the figure of the fool personifies the openness and inter the indeterminacy. That's another hard part of the Rider Waite, you guys. There's lots of big words in here. So um, lots of stuff even I don't know and I went to college for literature and English. So don't feel bad if you don't know a lot of these words because I sure don't. The figure of the fool personifies that openness and indeterminacy which is inherent in every situation, never mind how much it may appear a matter of routine. In this card, in this, the card stands for the beginning and the end, for naivety or the most sublime fulfillment. So that makes sense why they decided to put 0 slash 22 because it does stand for the beginning and the end for um, naivety and fulfillment. So that makes sense. But like I said, for the purposes of continuity, we are going to be using it as the beginning. So the basic meaning here, it says zero as an aim and the search for the absolute inner calm allows one to dispense the external models and hard and fast expectations. Calm and freedom create a great openness. Connections and synchronicities come into being between the individual and the whole. Uh, one can call it the Forrest Gump principle. Just being in the right place at the right time. One cannot achieve and bring about more than that, and less would be to renounce existing possibilities. So this does also give you different ways you can use this card. So for a spiritual experience, it says the power of now. As the card for the day, don't let yourself be driven around the bend. It is foolish to worry about events or consequences which simply cannot be weighed up right now. As a prognosis or tendency, the fulfillment of essential wishes makes you, in a positive sense, happy and devoid of desire. And for love and relationships, two fools in love are like two nothings that link up to make a lem lemniscuit. Lemniscuit? Um, okay. The horizontal eight. Oh, which stands for infinity. Okay, so two zeros put together make the infinity symbol. Who knows that that's the word for the infinity symbol? I learned something new today. So for success and happiness, as a fool, it is your privilege not to know the answers and to learn new things. So that's why I thought it was important that we go over that because as you guys can see, every card has lots of different interpretations and it did say that in the first video that every card has multiple interpretations. So let's quickly go over the 10 important symbols that are in the full card here. So the first one is the figure's position or pose. So I'll hold this up for you guys while I'm reading so you can follow along with that if you so choose. Open with his large wings spread wide and chin in the air, ready to take off and launch himself in the air. Keeping one's nose in the air like that can, however, also be a sign of insecurity and arrogance. Next symbol is the chasm or terrace. So this thing that he's standing on here. It is impossible to say whether the fool's next step will take him over the edge to disaster or simply to the next rock. 
This can help us to concentrate on the moment. Uh, this next one is the red feather. Can you see that there? Don't look at me. The red feather that's on his hat there. I didn't even notice that, you guys. There's so much in here. <laughs> so we're looking at his little feather there, okay? Um, the flame of life and joy. Vital strength, potential vitality. The red feather shows the liveliness of a person's soul and heart. <laughs> the next one is the white dog down here. So an alert watchdog, either the fool himself is awake and aware in the intensity of the moment, or the dog calls a warning and shows what the human next to him has missed. So the next one here is the blue and white mountains, which is this right here. Honestly, I thought that was water. So that's really good to know that those are mountains. Can you guys see those? This represents Nirvana or Ice Age. As a fool, one is happy and without a care. In other words, one has already found paradise or the old suppressed problems have taken the upper hand. Take concrete wishes and fears seriously. Next one here is this yellow sky. And remember I told you guys in the colors video, they will differentiate between yellow and gold for you. You don't have to put too much thought into that. So the radiant sun, but also sensual desire of envy. Danger. Getting too close to the sun can mean a great fall. Positive. Illumination and inspiration equals strong, reliable consciousness. So remember the yellow does represent consciousness or something of that matter. It's too, too far back in the book. Okay, so the next one here is the white sun. I didn't even realize the sun was white. Jeez. Together with the white rose and the white dog. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, negative. Colorlessness, naivety, mind gone blank, positive, nirvana, completion, cleansing, the mind is void without identifications and attachments, also symbolizing liberty. The zero point, which is the number here, the zero warns against life that turns out to be a waste of time and effort, against unused talents. On the other hand, the origin of a system of coordinates equals a reference point for all the rest equals the absolute. The yellow boots. You see his little boots there? Little yellow boots. Positive. The fool goes his way with self-confidence. Every step is taken consciously. Yellow means conscious, member. Negative. He seeks his way with his feet instead of using his head and heart. What the head has forgotten, his feet must fetch. So I think that's why we got the yellow here behind his head as well as his feet to symbolize that as well as the zero. That's beautiful that that comes together like that. And the last one is the bundle on the staff. So this little thing back here. The burden that each of us has to carry. The black staff stands for one's own activities, at first only dimly perceived. Task, to sense and grasp one's potential. So uh, we also do see here, he has a really tiny little bundle there. He doesn't have much, right? He's given away everything in his life and that's all he's got with him. Maybe some snacks, maybe change of underwear or toilet paper roll or something. You know what I mean? It's tiny, tiny. And that's also talking about that naivety, that uh, willingness to throw everything away and start a new journey, that looking forward with arrogance, that willing to step off the cliff to a new beginning, right? So I did recognize that we have the white rose here with the white dog and the white sun. Those are all right next to each other, also with the white mountains. However, they talked about the sun and the dog, but not the rose. So I guess, you guys, that rose has no importance other than to symbolize that innocence and new beginning with the color white. So I really hope you guys took some of that in because I know I probably talked really fast and I'm trying really hard 
not to. I know I do have a tendency of doing that when I'm doing a lot of information. That way I don't trip over my words. So I'm really, really sorry if you guys had to pause that and try to take notes. I don't know that many of you guys are going to be taking notes to keep up with this, but you know, just for the sake of following up. So this is probably what these videos are going to be like. And I don't expect these videos to get a lot of traction because of the fact that these are going to be very boring, very stale, just walking through the cards. But I do think it's very important to have a platform on YouTube for somebody to walk you guys through each card, through all of the hidden symbolism in each card, because every video I've ever found on YouTube talking about how to learn tarot just gives you tips and tricks and does not walk you through things. They'll just basically say things like everything in the card has a meaning and then they won't tell you anything about it or they'll tell you one or two things. So if you guys are here to learn and you guys do follow this series in succession, I praise you because this is going to be real hard for me to get through watching back. I know I do watch all of my videos after I post them to see what worked and what didn't in the ways that I was talking. So I already know that this is going to come off really boring. There's no music. It's just me talking for 20 minutes straight about information dump. So that's why we're doing just these quick little bite-sized videos for you guys so that you can really concrete that stuff into your brain. Go back and watch it if you need to. Please, for the love of everything good, do not try to binge watch all 80 videos once I have them all posted. That's gonna hurt your brain. If you guys ever need to reference a specific card or a specific color or things like that, feel free to go back through these videos, but please don't try to binge watch any number of them. It's gonna hurt your brain real bad because I can only do a couple of these cards at a time before my brain really starts hurting. It's a lot of information, okay? So I really don't want you guys to feel bad if you can't watch these as they come out and you you have to take your time with them. I totally understand and I'm not really going to be looking at numbers on these videos. Um, it's the other ones that I put just more effort into making that I will be watching numbers on. So like I said, take your time with this. Please, 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 beautiful humans, be kind to yourself when learning. I know it's really hard work, so definitely drink lots of water, grab a snack if you need to in the next one. And for the second card, we will be going over number one, which is the magician. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, that's cool. Thumbs down. You don't have to like my video. And um, yeah, I really hope you guys have a beautiful, wonderful day wherever you are when this video reaches you, my friends. And I can't wait to see you in the next one for the magician. <laughs> Namaste.